So the next radio I've pulled out of the box of three Rotels is the 230. So it looks like we're going down the range. So once again we're into the evening and I should have finished this a long time ago. New. Yep, so shaman standard coffee mic like we would do. Rotel 230. So we want a sheet of paper. No idea what the date is, but something like the 21st. That'll do. March 23. Rotel RVC 230. And the seal number is... One 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 oh oh oh. Thirty eight. Is that a very low number one? Right. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll uh, start off with it without its uh, without opening it up. Get it plugged in. So the reason I like the Harvard 420M a little bit more than the Rotel 230 when it's effectively the same set is you get a half inch bigger speaker and they're cheaper to buy usually. That, well, they used to be till I started doing these videos. People go, oh, Harvard's, oh yeah, they're crap, they are. Because they've only seen the good buddy. And they don't always realise. It's like Fidelity's. People overlook the Fidelity 2000 and it's a side minute 134 just like this is. I'm putting the Rotel mic in that wants to go with the Rotel set. So we'll use the Shaman's mic. Right, picture in picture on, switch the camera for the appropriate, oh that's the wrong one, there we go, switch the power supply on 13.8 volts, and it's come on on channel 20 which is nice and handy, so we'll keep put the tone in the high position, turn the RF gain to full, key up, it's doing more than 3 watts, it's doing 3.2 watts, so move it to channel 40, it's doing 3 watts, move it to channel 1, it's doing 3.1 watts, low power, on channel 20 doing 120 milliwatts and the current consumption on full power is, is just an amp, look at this 1.002 deviation, wallow spot on wallow 2.2 to 2.5 but it might not be set how I want it to be set. So let's have a look at the frequency. We'll pull that up a bit, but it's as near as damn it. 27.79.106. And now we'll look at receive. Oh, has it got, we've got PA, haven't we? Testing one, two, testing one, two.
so we want the right frequency we're not that far off let's move the signal generator a bit it's too late to scratch your corner test this even if we service it in 20 minutes flat so it's still putting me behind there we go let's see what this let's put that on And unplug the that and plug in the instrument speaker. This is pretty good. 0.54 for 12d for 10 db 0.42 you can hear me over the jet aircraft from up the road like Coningsby the Euro fighters they're practicing for something don't know what they're practicing for dropping leaflets on Tango Towers, I'll be sure. Uh, 1.45. Squelch. Set it to full. Exactly 100 microvolts where I want it. And let's see where the sensitivity lies. Put the signal generator to standby. Set the squelch. Signal generator back on at 0.3 of a microvolt. Straight in. 0.29 microvolts. Fantastic. It's a little low on par, but it makes so little difference. Uh, so let's see what the R the meter is doing when you press transmit. It is saying actually 3.5 which is a bit nearer the truth than usual and let's see what it's saying with 100 microvolts on for S9 it's saying 8.0 oh, no we've got to get a better reading than that it is 200 microvolts Meter lamps are okay, switches are okay, pots are okay, sockets are okay, internal speakers are okay, and mic supplies are okay. Oh, good. Well, wrap it up and send it off then now, can't we? Not so fast, Mr. 21. Now, as a church organ builder, as you know, we use flat screws, slotted screws, throughout. It's a requirement. I cannot stand it when a product that should have Phillips or Positraft screws like this has got slotted screws. Let's turn the volume down so as not to annoy the people annoyed by a one kilohertz turn off the signal generator. Can I take that out with my fingers? No, I can't. I've got to remember to put those back now, haven't I? Right. Can we see any silly shenanigans in here? Looks like the reference crystal's been changed. It probably wasn't on frequency at some point. Well, that's the only thing I can see. So this one hasn't got the extra receive circuit. Some Rotel 230s have. Right, so we'll start off with the VCO. I only did one yesterday, so I might see if I can remember the procedure. Don't need picture-in-picture picture on for that. 
So Mr. Chippy's crocodile clip until such time as we open the officially open the box kindly sent to us by Alan, which I know contains crocodile clip leads. I don't remember that capacitor before. So resistor four should be four volts. So we'll just pop that down a fraction. Right, and going to transmit. especially the test sets in the right mode that should also be 4 volts so every time we've moved it right it's been the wrong way so we'll turn this one left red trim still the wrong way I'm just going to waggle that around because it can get dirt So that's near enough, 4 volts. Back to receive, because they are interactive. That's fine. Now we go to channel 1, check it somewhere between 1.82.3 and transmit. Absolutely fine. So it didn't need doing, but I've done it because it's part of the demonstration. And the last thing you want, the channel's dropping off. Right, put picture and picture on, and it's appeared not quite where I want it. So we'll go through the transmitter, checking we're on channel 20 this time. That was already peak. That's already peak. That's already peak. So over to the ones which you've got to be quick with. So the idea is we need to be taking it up beyond, try and get it beyond 4.4 .4 watts and then set it to balance it in the way shown in the manual, which is what I'm going to tell you right now. Do not and we all know the legal limit's 4 watt but for those people who think you get out better on 5 do not leave this at full whack so at the moment that's 4.4 4.4 .4. 4 and a bit 5.2 it's certainly one of the better ones this but the manufacturing tolerance is supposed to be able to do 4.4 .4 to do this balancing act. It's soon dropping as it heats up. So we need to take this one clockwise for 4.4 .4 watts and this one anti-clockwise for 4. The manual says 3.8 but we're going for the full legal limit of 4. There we go, that's set. So I can put that on my clipboard, 4 watts. Now, channel 1, they want it to be within point 0.1 between the band edges. And it's still 4. I could say, I could say it's 4.01 or something like that. I would say it's 4 watts. And then on channel 1, you know what, it's 4. This is one, this has got to be the most balanced one I've ever seen. Wow, he's got the bestest one. Best, bester, and besterist. You asked any five year old. Um, so, where did Tango 21 come from? Somebody asked. When I was in Yorkshire, we had a business radio system. You have to remember, I'm not a CB, I'm a radio engineer. Um, 
so I was licensed as a radio amateur in 1979 and my late mother was helping in the business and that business was running a small shop with eight, doing HMV products like televisions and audio we had a business radio system because there were three engineers myself because I wasn't there all the time I was doing my church organ building apprenticeship even though it was my business I uh, set that for four I can hardly see the meters on these. So, we had a Motorola business two way radio system, some second hand radios. There was a CD 100s. I forget what the base station was. But anyway, we had selective calling. This was FM VHF high band. So, we're talking about. One seven something transmit, one six something receive. Business radio in the UK has a four point eight meg split between. You can't talk vehicle to vehicle. You have to go through the base. So we had the selective calling system, and it meant that if you were out of your vehicle, you could say you were out of your vehicle, and it would send that back to the base. They'd know you were out of the vehicle. And that you you could call them back because it would be sat there bleeping or flashing or whatever. Just turn this to low power. So my call sign. We had two areas we were working in. Round Sheffield and around Nottingham. And I was in the Nottingham zone. And so my call sign was Trent zero one. And the Sheffield ones, we were on the border of Rotherham, were, well, no, it was, it was 10 Trent 01. Don't even go wide. These were allocated by the firm we were doing the two-way radio system. Yeah, it was 10 Trent 01 uh, for me. And the Rotherham ones were 15 rather 12 and things like that I, I know one of the chaps was 19 uh, Darren uh, he was Tango 19 he became and it was uh, 15 rather 19 so can we get 400 milliwatts on this it's usually a dirty preset so that was fine and then we had a different selective calling system which used a VDU so you could see on the screen who was calling. I'll do the frequency as well while we're at it. And it couldn't take the same numbers as the previous system. You couldn't have it had you couldn't have a zero, so it was had to be two digits, so you couldn't have zero one. And so I had to change call signs. Or you had to have two digits or something like that. Um, 79125. A bit high. Anyway, suffice to say, we had to change call signs. So the nearest event, because they've been allocated to other people, I couldn't have. 11 so the next one with a 1 in it was 21 so I became instead of Trent 21 and Trent 19 and so on my mother was Trent 22 um, we took the T from that and it was Tango so the ones in the Nottingham area were Tango numbers and the ones in the Rotherham area were Romeo numbers so, 
there you are. That's how it became. So it was just my business radio call sign. Simple as that. And it's just carried on. So Mr. Chippy, his surname, uh, begins with a C. And there was a character in Camberwick Green, a children's animated show from the 60s. Um, so anybody, have a look at that on YouTube, Camberwick Green, if you haven't, if you're from abroad. Um, and there's a carpenter, and his apprentice is called Chippy Minton. And... It you know it was something which he picked up at school that uh, they'd call him uh, Chippy Minton. So when we started having to test CB radios, when I was up at when I was a junior partner at Compass Communications in Bradford um, in the late nineties and early double O's, um, which is where he was already working. Um, well, you know, we're having to go around the corner and test radios and that, and uh, so I used to call call him Mr. Chippy. Simple as that. It's just that's it. Simple as that. <laughs> so that's where it comes from. We'll do the deviation. So I want this vertical one to be in its central position. And we want that one to be now set for the right deviation. Walla, walla. Just a little bit loud now. Let's try it there. Walla, spot on. So I've reset it my way. So it's still 2.2 to 2.5 kilohertz, but we have altered that. So low power is now 400 milliwatts, and we'll go on to normal power and see what the current consumption is now. It's 1.159. 1.159. VCO, um, and it's now 4 plus 4. 279126 meter did I set that while I was babbling yeah Let's see whether we can get anything more out of this receiver so we'll go over to the oscilloscope which I haven't switched on S9 signal just wait for that trace to come up. I'll turn the bench light off, it's a bit easy to see, and we'll see if we can do the detector. That was already spot on. I wouldn't make a very good car mechanic, would I? I'd say, well, it, that was already right, that was already right. Instead of whistling, go, ooh, ooh, oh, I don't know who looked at this glass. <gasps> oh. And squelch down 4 dB on that meter. See if we can get anything more out of it. Good, blooming well can. That was a massive improvement. I found like, this coil out time and time again. I don't know whether the Phantom screwdriver expert thinks it's in the transmitter. the biggest signal on for these a bit more there that's it let's get a new reading so let's go to the right scale 
the 12 dB we now have 0.34 10 dB we now have 0.24 and we've actually got at 20 we've got 0.9 this is exceptionally good now the squelch is probably altered squelch to full No, it's still coming in at 100, which is where I want it. And let's see where the sensitive bit is. So put it to the thing to stand by, set the threshold on the radio, signal generator back on. So it's now 0 0.46. S meter that might have altered so I've put S9 on the signal generator it just needs to come up a fraction done So I hope the Rotel 220s is quick. What a lovely set. You know, we you can do ten identical sets in a row, and one will outshine. One that usually outshines is that strange-looking SMC Oscar One with the Cybernet chassis and the tiny little meter, and they just work better than a lot of the others. It's weird. Right, we'll switch the signal generator off and we'll put the aerial in. Go to its own speaker. Test gear off. I'm even going to switch off the other set of cameras. One and a Roger. Nineteen a Roger. Excellent. Well, we're doing an on the air test tomorrow with Mr. Chippy. That is exceptional. Thanks for watching. Rotel two thirty, Cybernet one three four chassis from nineteen eighty one.